Now we're going to look at page 93 in your workbook. It's section 7.2, factoring trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So this is a trinomial that we have a lead coefficient of 1. So it makes it a lot easier to factor that way um, because you can just kind of reverse FOIL and do it intuitively. But we are going to show you, or I'm going to show you a, the way the book does it first. Then we'll look at the other methods as well. But when you multiply out two binomials, we have this middle term. Remember, we have our first our outside, inside, and our last, right? So the outside and inside end up being both x terms so that we can add them together. So what we want to do is when we have it in the form like this, with them already added together, we want to figure out how to split it back apart. And then we can use our factor by grouping method or the box method to um, figure out the binomials that we would need to multiply together that created that trinomial. So here's some steps. So just pause the video and read through the steps and I will go over them, but you can um, read through those and then I'll, I'll say them as well, but just give yourself a minute to absorb that. Okay, so step one is find two numbers, P and Q, whose sum is B and product is C. So as I go through the examples, I'll reference back to this, but think that we want to find things that sum to B with a product of C. So we're looking what adds up to that middle term, you know, what factors of C, I, I think of it that way. Factors of C that sum to B. It kind of sounds like a little better rhyme. Um, step two, rewrite the expression so that the middle term is split into two terms, P and Q. And then um, we're going to use factor by grouping. And then we'll verify by multiplying back to make sure it's correct. Okay, so I'll leave the steps showing here, and then we're looking at example 7.12, factor x squared minus 2x minus 15. So in order to do that, we need to think what two um, factors of C, so factors of C, and then sum to B, the middle term. So C is negative 15. Um, it's actually really AC, I want to say, that, that you would actually have to consider this coefficient, So, but it's 1, so it's always going to come out to be C. But I want you to start thinking it's really A times C that we'll see later in the AC method when we have a coefficient other than 1. So kind of think of that. Um, so we have 1 times negative 15, which would be negative 15. So what are factors of negative 15? We kind of think, well, we have um, negative 15 and 1, but our B is negative 2. So negative 2 is pretty small. So 1 and 15 are far apart, so we're not going to want to even consider those, but we could just write them down just to see. So we have negative 15 and 1. If I were to add those together, I would get negative 14, so that's a no, right? So we still have to do trial and error no matter which way we slice it here. Um, and then if we had negative, let's just try negative 3 and a positive 5. Let's see what happens with that. So negative 3 plus positive 5 is what I'm doing. I was adding these, right? So negative 3 plus 5 is going to give me a positive 2. So that's not quite it. So now if I just reverse these, so, so this one's out, but I know I have the number right, just my signs are wrong. So now I'm just going to say 3, a positive 3 plus or not, sorry, plus, but, well, it's plus a negative 5, 
would give me the negative two that I want. So that works. So now I'm gonna split this back part x squared, and then it'll be plus three x minus five x, or actually I'm gonna write it better as plus negative five x, and then minus 15. Now I could put those in a box or I can just use the parentheses method and I'm going to pull out a common factor. Now these will always be set up so you don't need to rearrange, but I'm going to pull out what's common to x squared and um, 3x would be just x and that leaves me with x plus 3 here. Now I'm going to do that in a different color, pull out what's common here would be the negative five. Let's try that. Again, we might have to play with it a little. And then we're gonna think back negative five times what gives me negative five x would be the positive x. And same here, a plus three, negative five times plus three gives me the negative 15. So that works. Now I have a GCF here of x plus three. So I'm gonna pull that out just like we did before with our factor by grouping. And then what's left goes here, x minus five. And that is my result. Um, then we want to verify that's really important with these. So we're gonna um, watch here, verify really key. So I would do x times x is going to be x squared plus negative 5x plus 3x minus 15 does in fact give me x squared minus 2x minus 15. So that works. So you always have to check for that middle term. Now you may have done some factoring before and there's definitely shorter ways to do that you can just kind of intuitively play with it like you can set it up as a um, skeleton so to speak is a lot of times what I do so I would do that uh, I'll just kind of make a little space over here actually maybe I'll just rewrite um, as an alternate method. I'll just show you that one later, actually, I think, so that we don't get bogged down in it. Now let's look at example 7.13. Um, we have factor x squared plus 8xy plus 12y squared. Now at any point, if you want to try this on your own um, pause the video and just go ahead and do it and check back and again I really want to point out that this is actually a C just because in the future we want to not assume every um, lead coefficient is going to be one in this case it is but a C in this case is actually um, one and twelve but we also have to consider the x that we have an x and a y so it's a little bit trickier so we have the product of a c and i'm going to write out the whole thing actually like the whole term instead of just the a and the c i'm going to put the variables too so we actually have um, x squared I'll write that here and then we have the 12y squared. So we need to cover all those components, right? We have, that's a one. So what um, factors of this are going to add up to b is a x y. So we want to add to b and this is like we're going to have factors here. So if we have, um, let's think we could try four and three are factors of 12, right? So we would have four X times 
times like the um for x y and 3xy. So I was just going to add those together. That's a y. I would get 7xy. So, nope, that one doesn't work. So, when you're doing these, if you want to show work, it's helpful to just try it out. Don't erase it. Just put a line through it, though. Make sure you do put a line through it so I know that, you know, it's not your answer. It's a trial. And then I'm going to think, okay, six and two, hmm, that seems like it might work. Six XY plus two XY does in fact equal eight XY. So good. We're, we're in business there. So now we're going to rewrite this as X squared plus six XY plus two XY plus 12 XY squared. So what I'm doing here again is I'm just splitting up this middle term, splitting it back apart into what it looked like when I multiplied out when I did the foil. So I'm just kind of reversing that whole process. So now I can do factor by grouping here and I can pull out in x out of this and i'm left with x squared plus 6y this is a little bit tricky because you do have the other variable on the end so it's your brain has to kind of um account for that and think about that as well it doesn't seem like a lot but it, it really can be a little bit um just adds that one more element so we, we will start with ones that don't have that in your homework um two xy plus 12 y squared i can pull out a two for the number part and then i have a common variable of y then what's left is going to be x plus six y and that's what I'm going for. Remember, I want to have that GCF. So I have X. Oops, I have a squared still on there. It should just be this first factor here, um, X times X plus 6Y. Sorry about that. So just fix that. Um, X plus 6Y is our common factor. And then what's left, we write in parentheses times the other factors that are remaining x plus 2y as binomial okay now if i verify so so i definitely want to um, mark my answer and then i'm going to verify and i'm going to write that that's what i'm doing here um so i have i'm going to foil so i have x times x is x squared um the outsides would be plus 2xy insides are plus 6xy and it's okay that it it doesn't if it's not the same order here as long as it's the same numbers um and then plus the 12y squared on the end and you can see up here how that's you know looks i have those two middle terms commutative property says if they're switched around it's okay but look at that now once I go ahead and add them together, I have x squared plus that 8xy plus the 12y squared. And that's what I'm looking for here, that 8xy with this 8xy, making sure I have a match, and then double check your ends. A lot of times you just really want to check that that middle term works. Okay. Now I am going to do um, the alternate method here. This is more um, intuitive or thinking of a skeleton idea. And what I mean by skeleton is just I'm going to take this, um, I'll write it as alternate method. I think of it as trial and error. But again, you still always need to do trial and error in some way, shape, or form. Um, so I have this x squared plus 8xy plus 12y squared. 
and I'm just gonna make a um, skeleton I guess I'm thinking okay I have plus and plus so I know I have to have the same signs here and I'm kind of setting up my uh, reverse foil is usually what this is called too so I know for my first terms my first have to be a combination of factors that um, give me x squared so I would have x and x is usually how it's going to split that way if there were a number other than one I would have to consider that as well which we'll do later on um, now this, I know some people have a hard time with this to start with, but once you get it, you always get it and it's a lot easier than doing the split apart and grouping. But, um, now I'm going to look at this, um, last term, what would give me the 12 Y squared that when I do um, foil it out I would get that middle term of 8xy so it's kind of really the same process we were doing here um, and it works just popping those right into the skeleton because we have a coefficient of 1 on our lead if we didn't it's a whole we've got to really um, look into that more it's a whole different ball game there um, similar process but um, really have to check that middle term it's not quite so simple so 12y squared would split apart I could put a 2 here and a 6 here I also need my y's on there and now I have to check I always have to verify on this so I can't just assume that's my answer but I do want to mark it clearly and then I'm going to check so then I have x times x is x squared. I have um, 2 plus 2xy. x times 6y gives me 6xy. Again, I did io instead of oi. That's fine. Um, and then plus 12y squared. And then look at that. It will give me my 8xy. So we are good. We have that. So that's our answer, which is just the same as here again a commutative property these are equivalent you can always take two factors and switch the order of them um, make sure you take the whole binomial not just like random pieces so all right so that is getting pretty long for this video so we'll stop there for that first page and that'll be part one so um thanks for watching